Dear students, I welcome you all for this screencast lecture related to isolation of nitrogen fixing bacteria, especially rhizobium from the legume root nodules. We first check out what is rhizobium. So when you go for a Google search, if you type rhizobium, it's a genus of bacteria that has been associated there with the formation of the root nodules in the plant system. And some more points we will try to ask in the Google. What is the function of rhizobium? The basic function of rhizobium is fixing atmospheric nitrogen from the for the plants to provide them with the nitrogenous compounds that is required for their growth. At the same time, these bacteria are having a symbiotic relationship there with the plant system. Now, why they may be important there in the plant system? They are found associated there with the root nodules of the leguminous plants and fix nitrogen. Plants cannot able to fix the nitrogen. That is, they cannot able to make their own nitrogen fixation possible. So, they depend on the bacteria or artificially supplied nitrogen containing fertilizer for their growth. So, this nitrogen that have been fixed by the bacteria will be further converted into amino acids and finally into proteins in the plant system. You can try to understand more points about rhizobium when you go into this particular video that has been provided there in the practical containing tab in your web page. So in that in the second serial number you can able to see a video housed there for rhizobium in which you can able to understand some more points there. So this is the way in which the rhizobium will be associated there with the roots of the legume plants as the root nodules. Legume plants are in Tamil Lavandu Payer Vagai Payergal Abdin Sulvanga. Payer Vagai Payergal na Yenan Ketina Ulundu Pacha Payer Konda Kadala Vair Kadala Ida Yella Payer Vagai Payergal Abdin Sulvanga. Now we look at the points related to rhizobium isolation. So, in this rhizobia isolation, you need to collect the sample from any kind of a legume plants and from that the nodules need to be carefully separated and they need to be surface sterilized by using hydrogen peroxide, mercury chloride or and with 70% ethanol. So, with that surface sterilization, you need to continue the experiment. So, the nodules that have been taken for this purpose should be of a good quality. How you can able to ensure the quality of the nodule? You can look at there in the downside. You can able to see the pink coloration there in the nodules, which directly says that the amount of leg hemoglobin present there is huge. As a result, they are all effective nodules. So they have a lot of chance for the bacteria to be isolated from such kind of nodules. So the types of nitrogen fixing bacteria, a small introduction something, say this nitrogen fixing bacteria and the process is referred as the biological nitrogen fixation. So here some could be of a symbiosis, some could be of an associative and some could be of a free living in nature. The organism we are going to deal in this practical is an example for a symbiotic nitrogen fixer that is rhizobium. So it can able to fix around 50 to 500 kilogram of nitrogen per hectare per year. This is a slide which says what are all the organisms that have been considered as a rhizobium. The term rhizobium is also used as a carbon or general term referring to any kind of a bacteria that is nodulating a legume plant. The reason is say you look at here various genus of bacteria were being referred as a rhizobium. They all can able to cause nodule or produce nodule on the legume plants. On total, somewhere around some 18 to 20 genera have been present. Those have the potential to nodulate the legumes. Among them, rhizobium is one genus. There are a lot of other genus are there. Say for example, Encifer, Allorhizobium, Shinella, Phyllobacterium, Bradyrhizobium. Photorhizobium, Azorhizobium. Say Azorhizobium is a classical example for a type of rhizobium that commonly nodulate the in the stems of the plant that is on the plant Sesbenia rostrata. In their stems, you can able to see the nodule. Even certain methylobacterium were found to be nodulating certain species of the legume, say Crotalaria and Trifolium species. 
a recently identified family in which more amount of nitrogen fixing nodulating rhizobium present is a Burkholderiaceae that contains the genera Burkholderia. This Burkholderia has been associated with the following plants say Delbergia, Mimosa. See this Mimosa pudica you can able to understand. Totta sedigi sedi abdin sulvanga. So that is the Mimosa pudica in which also a kind of a legume in which the rhizobium have been associated there in the nodule formation. Now we look at the requirements that are needed to isolate the rhizobium. So you have to collect the legume plants which contains prominent root nodules. The media which we are going to use for this isolation is yeast extract manitol agar. This yeast extract manitol agar to which you will be adding the Congo red. The media compost and other things will be available there in the lecture notes. You can check it from there. So you need to prepare a 50 ml of sterile water. This sterile water is required mainly to wash and clean the nodules what you have collected. That is before isolation of the rhizobium from the nodule it need to be properly cleaned. So this 50 ml waters can be even taken in a uh, 10 ml aliquots there in 5 numbers of test tubes. Then you need a sterile petri dish. Pet then you need a petri dish which may not be a sterile one mainly for keeping the nodules and washing the nodule. For that you need to have a uh, petri dish and then some 5 to 6 numbers of sterile petri dishes are required in which you need to dispense the yeast extract manitol agar what you have prepared. So the yeast extract manitol agar you have prepared will be dispensed into the petri plates. It will be showing a red coloration. The next requirement is a 70% ethanol. Previously they used to go with mercury chloride, hydrogen peroxide and even 70% ethanol for sterilizing the nodule. Now with the literature is available, it is very clear that even a 70% ethanol will be sufficient enough to sterilize the nodule. So just by sterilizing with a 70% of ethanol, then by subsequent wash with the sterile water, you can crush the nodule even in the tubes or in the petri dishes. From the crushed material, you can directly go for isolation. So the steps have been shown here. So the root nodule is taken and the root nodule is washed with water for 3 minutes. Even you can use sterile water to wash the thing. Then as per the old protocol what I have told they go for using the 0.5% of sodium hypochlorite. And further it will be surface sterilized with the 70% of ethanol for 1 minute. You can go for adopting a 70% ethanol based sterilization for Two subsequent times. That is the first two or 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 the the you can add a 5 ml of sterile water. the first two or the first two or the the can do the thing in the test tube also. Test tube the roots the nodules the 70% ethanol is two times wash and then you add a sterile water and two or three times sterile water add and complete the clean and then you can crush the nodules by using a glass rod. One glass rod is complete crush and the crushed solution from that crushed solution you can directly streak there on the yeast extract manitol agar plates. When you keep the cultures for a overnight incubation you will get the colonies. So this is the appearance of the colonies there in the petri plate. It will be having a translucent or whitish colony and the colony will have a lot of gummy substances there. In the medium pathina it will be having a reddish color. You are adding the combo red. That is another reddish color. In the reddish color none of the rhizobial species will be taking up inside. Whereas agrobacterium can able to take up that particular reddish color. So, either you can able to differentiate the rhizobium from the other non-rhizobial organism. Rhizobium the appearance every it will be having a lot of gummy secretions. Finally, we will try to look at some of the efforts taken by your 
previous batch students unga seniors vandu rise up isolate pannadodaya some images and some significant points we will discuss now so this is of a 2015 batch who have isolated the rhizobium you can able to see a copious that is large amounts of gummy secretions that have been present there in the petriculate and this plate shows the rhizobium that have been isolated by the 2016 batch 2016 batch students isolate panna rhizobium plate you can able to see a lot of gummy secretion there in the plate idhil ellame they have not added the congo red adanalada pathina red coloration you cannot able to see in the plates or they have subcultured this thing in some other media say for example r2 agar and the mari or media la they may have subcultured and the final documentation effort is there from the 2017 batch of students the 2017 batch of students la they have identified some kind of an organism copious gummy secretions producing organism polysaccharide producing organism by using yeast extract mannitol agar and they have identified that as a rhizobium adavad undu lab la seiyumbodu in the gummy secretions varadha vachi they thought that it is a rhizobium idha further they have taken for the 6ns rrna sequencing that batch has attempted for a 6ns rrna sequencing in the 6ns rrna sequencing finally this organism was identified belonging to enterobacter okay idu vandu it is not an Uh, rhizobium species but it belongs to enterobacter in the point ay ungalku na inga narrate pandran appdi kettingna most of the organism you identify there in microbiology with the help of a conventional technique such as a biochemical technique illa vand pigmentations illa morphology of the organisms idha vechella identify pandrathu will in most of the cases it will be wrong enna reason kettingna you always need to identify any kind of a bacteria by using the 6ns rrna sequencing so in the 6ns rrna sequencing vanda and the particular culture ku the students have initiated their names are also provided there you can able to look at the thing and when it was submitted the data has been provided here idilla they have identified it as a enterobacter species so even a enterobacter can able to produce copious amount of polysaccharide there we cannot take that as a rhizobium okay so you need to go for lot of other tests mainly to confirm it as a rhizobium